You're listening to the Fairies and Folklore Podcast by Renal. I'm dark fantasy author Renal Janssel van Vieren. With nearly a decade of digging around in dusty folklore books, researching creatures of imagination that ignited my curiosity, I'm here to share the folklore in a nutshell and how I reimagined it for my writing in An Origin of the Fae. This is the Fairies and Folklore Podcast. Hi, I'm your host, Rinal Janssen von Vieren. You can just call me Rinal. In today's episode, we're continuing our exploration of the Fae realm. This episode is brought to you by my book, Once, Tales, Myths and Legends of Fairy, available in ebook, paperback and audiobook. Go to rinaldemythmaker.com forward slash my hyphen books for more. We are continuing our exploration of Water Fae. Today's fairy, Jengu. Folklore in a nutshell by Renal. Jengu, Miengu, Liengu, Mayengu. Depending on the region, the name and the plural changes. So let's just stick with Jengu. They are native to Cameroon, a central African country up in the Gulf of Guinea. The Jengu are typically beautiful mermaids with long hair and gap-toothed smiles, resembling the humans living on the shore in ethnicity and in their choice of accessories. They reside in rivers and the sea, bringing good luck to their worshippers. Among their powers is the job of intermediary between humans and the spirit world, most likely other fae, and the power to cure disease. The Jengu are linked to Mami Water, an important African water spirit. There's even a Jengu cult. We'll not get into that. But these water fae are definitely thoroughly worshipped by mortals. And now, for my interpretation of the fae, in an origin of the fae, Jengu. Singular, Jengu. Plural, Miengu. Water fae who are extremely loyal to mommy water. They have a strong influence on African folklore and are usually associated with mommy water. They resemble mermaids with yellow and green hair. Their fish tails are mostly silver, reflecting the colors found in the water they swim in. They smile a lot. They have gaps between their front teeth. They also like to giggle. Mostly they talk in their own language that involves a lot of clicking noises, like the noise made by crab claws or insects. They have power over water. They can make it move in whatever way they want. They will ally themselves with anyone who protects nature, and especially those who go up against the Obeyifu. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode of the Fairies and Folklore podcast, and that you've learned something new about fairy. Remember that you can get a transcript of this episode in the description. If you're new to the podcast, why not go and grab your free copy of Unseen, the second book in the fairy tale series, on my website, renaldemythmaker.com. Loads of folklore, magic, and danger await. Take care.